conference will now be recorded. Is the screen shared? Yeah, it's okay. Okay. So today we're going to start with the PL script. That's nothing but a programming language for an SQL, SQL queries. So why we call this as a programming language? Because to achieve one requirement of a client, we need to write a kind of a program. Program in the sense, multiple queries together and execute them together. That's a program. So here you will be grouping multiple SQL statements and executing them at one at together, you meant to say. So we call this as a programming SQL or PL SQL. So there are some features of the PL SQL. Now, as you need to execute the statements as a, a together, so as a collectively, collectively, so you need to include those set of code in the form of a block grouping that grouping is known as a block in pl sql terminology so block of code in the sense a pl sql block also it is called as where it contains a group of a sql queries within it that's nothing but a block pl sql block so block is nothing but a collection of executable statements the pl sql is used for both server side and client side validation so pl sql code can be used for writing server side validations or even client side validations or development applications also you can use this pl sql well now coming to the features of pl sequels it is a procedural language of non-procedural language means what so as you say it is a block as it is a block you may have multiple lines of code in a block and you will be executing this code at once i run the block means the lines within this block will not be executed all will not be executed at once first line will execute then second line then third line then fourth line so it is known as a non-procedural language so, so here it processes only one line at one point of time whereas non-procedure language means a set of rows at once so when you're executing a block you feel that you're executing all the code at once but internally it is going to execute in the form of a procedural language executing line by line so that's the reason it is a procedural language extension of non-procedure. You feel as if you are executing the complete block at once, but actually within it, it will execute line by line. Okay. Now it supports variables and constraints. You can add constraints to the PL SQL block. You can also add some variables to it. So what is meant by variable? Variable is nothing but a buffer containing some data so the data can vary which can vary from execution to execution or from step to step also that's a variable this pl sql also supports error handling if you are executing this block of code line one two three four and if any error comes at the line number two someone should be there to handle this error right Otherwise, your complete code will be uh, aborted or it will just stop in between and throw some errors or failure of the code will be achieved. But to stop that failure of the code and handling the error at runtime, you have an error handling mechanism. It's not also known as an exception handling. <coughs> exception in the sense error. Failure in the code execution or due to many reasons maybe because of the data invalid data entered to the tape to that uh, code or some connection has lost your database is there if you're reading some data from a file file not found error data type mismatch error anything it can be so to handle such kind of an errors you should have error handling mechanism in the PL SQL code 
third thing it supports conditions you can write some conditions if first condition is true what sort of statements to be executed if second condition is true what is the block to be executed so in that case if else conditions if some condition is true then what to do then execute some block else execute the other set of code so that's not nothing but the conditions also it supports iterations iterations means repeating of a block n number of times i have this block which has to be executed 10 times so i see i should say start executing for the first time second third fourth and stop at one once it reached to the 10th count so repeating the same block for n number of times that's iterative so under iterations you will you will be using for loop we'll see this all syntaxes how to implement the for loop while do while this all comes under for each loop this all comes under the iteration okay apart from this in pl sql you will find different sub programs sub programs in the sense a code a block of code is given some name it is stored in the database by certain name that's nothing but a sub program and this program can be called from the database n number of times for the requirement so under sub programs you will be finding you will find procedures you will be learning functions triggers packages so all this comes under the title of sub programs clear so these are the some of the features of the pls tree Got it, Sham? <coughs> Hello? Am I audible, Sham? Yes, yeah, yeah. I put on. Okay. Now, here we'll see the syntax how to write a PL SQL block. The PL SQL block is divided into three parts. One is known as a declaration, declarative block, declarative section. Next one is known as a executable section. And third one is known as an exception section. Three parts block a block will contain all these three sections declarative section is optional executable section is mandatory exception is again optional so when you're writing a pl sql block always you should have a executable block executable block itself is nothing but you'll have a keyword begin and some code within it and end with a semicolon this is your executable block getting in this executable block only you'll find exception block so this exception block will be placed inside this executable block which is optional and this declarative block will be placed above this begin if you want to declare any variables any cursor anything you have to write before this begin keyword that's a declarative which is optional Okay, so the block structure is nothing but how will you write this declaration with the keyword declare declare and write the variables cursors whatever you want to declare before using them and which should be ended with a semicolon then comes your executable block which is begin and end which is mandatory block and in this block you'll write the statements executable statements which has to be executed to implement the client logic every sql statement whatever you include in this begin and end should end with a semicolon it can be a select insert update any logic anything should be ended with semicolon in this begin and end this is your exception block which is again optional exception keyword and the statements which has to be block of statements which has to be executed if any error occurs in this 
statements of your executable statements well but right now we will keep aside this exception block later we'll see in the separate topic what is exception handling now we will discuss only about the declaration and executable block <coughs> now how to declare a keyword or how to write a block when you say declare keyword and here you can write begin and end this is what your block if anything you have to declare you can write it or just if you don't have also you can write declare or ignore it when you say begin and end if i select this complete block and you it's not a single query to run this uh, statement it is a group of queries so i say run the script or f5 now the as per the syntax uh, I, at least one statement should be there inside this executable block if no statement is there at least place a null now you find here anonymous block is created or completed anonymous means what this is a pl sql block a pl sql block got executed this is nothing but a block in this block you have two types of blocks just a okay so this is a pl sql block a statements with some begin and end so i can also run this block with begin and end and a null i see here okay semicolon is not there mandatory semicolon is <coughs> anonymous block is completed so in the sense a pl sql block is completed is that clear? Sure. Hello. I put that in your time. Hmm? It's clear? I put me back. No, it's, uh, it's clear. Okay. Now, here you have just uh, some information about this declarative block, how to declare the variables. Now, if I want to declare something, you can take any variable name. You need to say what kind of data it is going to hold and what is the max size. When you see here, V1 is a variable of number data type five size. In the memory, a buffer is created, a memory is reserved, which will be pointed by V1, which will hold only numbers of max size five. And here right now, there's no value to this. It's a default value. This is known as a declaration, declaring a variable. Right now, this variable don't have any data. You can assign some value to it, a number. 10, v1 colon equals to 10. So in this memory, 10 value will be stored. How to assign a value to a variable? v1 colon equal to 10. This is known as an assignment operator. In PL SQL, this is used to assign a value to a variable. Next line, you said V1 equal to 50. In the sense, the same variable should hold to 50 value. In the sense, like the old value is gone, removed, and which is replaced with a new value 50. So, from here, you can conclude that a variable will hold only one value at one point of time. A variable cannot hold multiple values. It will hold only point to a single value in the buffer, hold some one value in the buffer. 
so this is known as an assignment or initialization to a value to a variable so here actually we have declared in the first step and assigned some value in the second step if you want you can also combine these two steps as one like v2 number size assigning value 20 means declaring as well as assignment in a single line so this is the syntax how to declare a variable in the declarative block <coughs> okay now what is executable it's a mandatory section you should have at least one statement to execute which starts with the begin and end key exception is optional which handles your abnormal situation some errors if you come across any errors during execution this block will handle it so once you have got once you have executed this block you got a statement anonymous block completed okay so blocks are of two types blocks are of two types scan has completed warning anonymous block and named block so anonymous block and name block right now what you've got is anonymous block here in the sense there is no name for your block here you see they i did not assign any name for this block this indicates it is just executing after writing this code you can run this that's it it is not stored in the database by any name you, this code will never it's not stored now in the database as it is not stored in the database you cannot recall it for execution maybe tomorrow i may not be able to execute this code even though it got executed now because it is an anonymous block what is named block when you're creating a block you should give some name for that block so that it gets saved to the database and whenever needed you can reuse it or recall it okay reusability that's a name block so under named block we will be studying later the procedures functions packages triggers okay this all comes under the named block <coughs> initially we will be understanding some concepts with anonymous block where no name will be there but if you want you can save this code to your one folder of your desktop with a extension dot sql you can save this with a dot sql folder file name clear this is about the named and the anonymous block now what is the variable i just now we discussed variable is something a memory location where you can hold data for your PL SQL block for using it for further processing it. So when you say the variable of certain data type, here you said V2 number, size, and value. So this is your data type. This is your SQL data type, simple data types, number, char, var, char, right? Now, what all data types you can create a variable? You can use simple data types variables composite and even boolean okay if you see here uh, boolean is something a variable have holding a boolean data like true or false those are the two values where a variable can hold it so how you can declare a variable of boolean like suppose v1 boolean that's it so i'm declaring a variable of to boolean by default it will say false Later, I can also assign this as true. Semicolon. So right now, v1 is a variable of type boolean, which is holding the value true in its memory space. Okay. So in this manner, you can declare. In SQL, if you see, there was no boolean data type. But in PL SQL, you can use this boolean data type. Here. Okay. Now, variable declarations are also can be done by two ways. You can declare a variable in a block. If you see, this is a PL SQL block. 
in this block if i declare here v1 number of 4 and holding some value 33 semicolon then sort here you have a variable which is declared of size 4 and 33 is the initial value assigned for it so here a variable is declared inside a block in the sense this v1 can be accessed only within this begin and end the scope of this v1 is only within this begin and end so this type of variable is known as a plsql variable the variables declared inside the block are known as plsql variable and you have a second type of variable that is the bind variable so bind variables are nothing but the variables declared on the prompt the prompt means here here directly here i can say where how to declare it where suppose n1 you want to hold a number or a var care of some size executed so here back here <coughs> okay so you have declared a variable name of varchar2 and the size 10 means in the memory you have a variable whose name is name name is a variable pointing to this location which is holding a varchar data of type size 10 right now there is there's no data here now you can assign some value to this variable how to assign a value here you know v1 e colon equal to 33 you can say now here the variable name is name as the variable is declared on the prompt this is a prompt pl sql this is known as a bind variable bind variable now how to identify a bind variable with the keywords colon yeah. colon variable name so wherever you find colon and the name that is a bind variable now to this bind variable you want to store some value it is a varchar data type i say i want to show abc this is the value i want to save in this variable refer how to assign this value to a variable you have an operator colon equals to okay now you need to <coughs> execute this for that exec execute the assignment of this value to the find variable anonymous block done now in the in the sense this variable name is having now abc now if you want to verify whether it is containing abc or not you need to print the value of this variable so how to display it you have a keyword print print and the bind variable colon name execute so you see here name abc so this is how you can declare a variable, assign value, and display. Bind these three are declaring a, excuse me. These three we are declaring the declare part are completely you know separate. You know you are writing as separate. Hmm? These three variables, you know these hmm. three, where car name these all three. So writing uh, out of the block completely. Yes. So declare. On the nothing. command prompt, I'm writing it. On uh -huh. the prompt. So it is known as bind variable. If I write it inside the begin and end here inside the declare, that be that will become a PL SQL variable. So if I writing begin declare part or begin part and that variable become a PL SQL. Huh? Yeah. If you write inside the declaration, where is not needed directly hmm. variable data type. Hmm. You don't need even an exec. You can assign the variable with a value. Okay print these are the keywords when you are accessing from the prompt okay okay so here 
and one note here you have the bind variables are not supported at the, uh, the don't support the boolean data types in the sense if i declare here where v1 boolean see here the var variable name should be of either number character var char n var char or boolean binary but apart from that you don't have any data type of boolean so boolean data type i cannot assign to a variable with the help of bind variable if you want you can write in a block but not inside the no but not here okay bind variable don't support boolean data type but pl sql variable supports boolean data type if you want to use boolean variable use it in a plc as a pl sql variable don't assign it as a bind variable because bind variable don't support it okay because here you don't have any variable data type of boolean when you are using as a var variable okay these are the types of variables bind and pl sql bind variable is a variable defined at the sql prompt this is the structure var variable name data type size example how to assign execute print and pl sql variables are the variables which supports each and every data type okay each and every data type how to use it inside the declare keyword you can declare a variable with a specific data type you can assign some value to it or if you want you can declare and assign together if you want you can assign some default values to it like name var char you can't you don't want to keep this as a blank not null don't keep it null value so you'll find you'll find you'll fill it with a default value smith so as soon as you declare the variable you want to enter the value smith to that memory so not null constraint okay so this is how you can declare a variables pl sql variables in a block now here date of joining default you want a sys date otherwise it will be null value right as soon as you create a uh, date variable it should be filled with today's date default value default is a keyword date, date is a data type and the default value flg is a variable boolean you want to assign its initial value with true pin is a variable which is a number data type which is assigned with this value and this value you don't want to change ahead throughout the program this value should be constant so i have to use the keyword constant means once it declared and fixed with some value it will be constant you can't change this value in that program like static variable hmm static variable it's not there's no uh, like static only but not exactly static uh so static something comes in other technology in pl sql you don't have static concept constant means that number cannot be changed i cannot make here instead of 8889 in between the program it pin code will be constant now throughout the program if you try to change also you'll get some error mm -hmm. it's to value like you can say more or less like static only but not exact meaning of static it's a constant when you say constant that's fixed okay this all what you have discussed is about only declaration correct 
Now, what about the begin and end? Inside begin and end, you should write some statements. If you're not writing any executable statement, at least place a null. Now, what statements you can write here? You can write any DML statements. I'm just confusing one second. Where hmm? name boolean, this where name boolean and execution name. These three print name we are writing uh, after the declare. No, this is anonym. This is just on the prompt. SQL ah, okay. prompt. Okay, Your declare starts here, see here, hmm. and ends here. Correct. Starting point, ending point. This is one block. Okay. This is something outside our return. Ah, yeah, that, that's what I'm okay, outside. Between this and this. Okay. Hmm? Okay, fine. Now here, the executable statements can be any DML statement, like insert, update, delete, you can write. Or also you can write some select queries. These are the statements which are accepted inside this begin and end. But you cannot write DDL queries inside the block. DDL queries or grant revoke these statements are not accepted in the block for this you have a different concept dynamic sql so right now you can't add this you can add only insert update delete and select inside this block okay here you can add commit rollback select queries dml queries inside the block now the syntax of writing these statements there is a slight change in the syntax of el when you write a select query in sql queries in sql you say select select list from table name where condition like this name employee number from table department 10. when you write the same query in pl sql as uh, one thing in pl sql PL SQL can't do any operations directly on the columns of a table. Okay. PL SQL can't do any operations directly on the columns of a table, column data of a table. So you need to bring the data from the columns to the variables. Getting? You need to bring the data from the columns to the variables. If employee number column is there, bring the employee number data to this variable if name is there e name bring the name to this variable and then do some modifications over it and push back to the table getting for that reason the syntax will change now select select list bring this select columns into this variables so into list of variables from table where clause as it is only this is the change in the plc if you're going to select two columns from a table you need two variables to hold it same data type right if a number is coming the variable <clears throat> the variable type also should be of a number same size or greater than that size if you're bringing the name data the variable data type should also be name so data type should be same so select name and number into enm and enm these are the two variables so before using these variables you should declare these two variables correct in the declarative block getting these two variables must be declared prior using it so employee number employee name employee name is a varchar so you should declare this variable of same data type as of e name and size because this data should be able to fit in this size should also be similar to this if you take employee number number so eno should be of number data type same size of employee number and also the sequence first column data will be moved to first variable second column to second third to third in that manner so when you're writing the variables also, you should take care.
Clear? Now here you can see one small example. How to declare a variable and store it in a variables and display it. Okay, now here is something. Display the name and salary of employee number 7902. Now we need a begin and end mandatory. Now you need to select some information of 7902. So to get the information from a table, the query read is select query. So select e name, salary, correct, and DEPT number. Okay, from an EMP table where EMP number equal to 7902. This is the query. As we know, the columns cannot be directly fetched and displayed. So you need variables. As right now we have three variables, uh, three columns, so into three variables. You can give any variable name. Name should be of VNM, V for variable and it's my indication. Salary is for VSAL and V D P T N. So three variables. And you should declare these three variables now. First one is VN. Where to declare? Declare. VNM. VNM. Now what data it is going to take? VNM is of varchar. So varchar to of some size. Next is VSAL. VSAL is going to hold salary, so data type should match accordingly. Number of something 7 comma 2. And next one, VDE PT number. Number of 2. So all the three variables you have declared over here. Right? Now if you run this code, so an anonymous block is completed. That's it. Now right now what completed in this sense, the values of 7902 are moved to these variables. Now if you want to print the values of these variables, you need some statement there. For that, you have a dbms underscore output dot put underscore line. So dbms underscore output is a built-in package of Oracle where you have one procedure named put underscore line which will display the values of these variables. I want vname, vname, right? Concatenating means combining. Next is vsal. Then again concat, vertical lines concatenating. That's the same thing. Okay, now execute it. An anonymous block done. Still, you don't find the values of these employees because even though you have written this DBMS statement, you need to activate it, enable it. To enable this, always when you're working on PL SQL, first statement you need to execute is set server output on. This statement will activate your DBMS statement. So this statement is must. This is session level. As soon as you connect to your database, if you execute once, it will be enabled throughout the session up till you log out. Now you can execute this block. Now you see 4300020. But you need a separation line between each data. So for that, you can add here space. Again, concat vertical lines means after name a space, this. So between all the column data, a space is needed. Now you see, four space, 3000 space, 20. Well, if you need a message, 
here you can see here the emp details are a colon single quotes are concatenating again here space more from this block see the employee details are a message a message here up to here a space combined with this variable data variable no need to give any quotation single quotes because it's a variable only the string some messages has to be given single quotes again a space the value of this variable space in this model. This is an anonymous block. Okay. Yeah, Sham. So every time. I'm declaring something, you know, this variables. I need to put a set server point out on. Not every time. When you start your working on the PLC. If I'm okay. right now connected to this batch six, I open this uh, SQL developer. I want to work on this schema. I hmm. if I want to work on PLC, well, execute this once. Hmm. And then work on the PLC code. Okay. Why this is needed to activate this package? Okay. Package will be used only in PL SQL. So whenever you're working on PL SQL, you may display some things using DBMS package. So to activate that DBMS package, the server on is needed. Okay. If you're working on SQL, not needed because there you don't have any DBMS package you don't use. Right. Okay. Now assignment operator, now here are some variables you were assigning some values. Here, VNAME, I did not assign anything. Just we have declared it, correct? Yes. Suppose if I have a N1 number of, suppose some size, here you're assigning some values to it, semicolon. So declared and assigning, how are you assigning it? With this assignment operator. So there are assignment operator colon equals to equal to greater than so this will come across later not now this is known as an external sorry internal assignment operator this is external assignment operator means where you are assigning some external value to a variable this is external assignment operator here you find the dbms syntax a message with a variable built-in package Put underscore line built in procedure. How to use it? Just now we have used it. How to activate this DBMS? You need to say set server output on, which activates your DBMS package statement. Okay. Now, yes, if you see, take this block. Declare name is a variable. You're assigning Smith VSAL with 200. You say here display in begin and display the values name and VSAL. So whatever the variables are holding the data here, assigned value name 20 and 200 and Smith is displayed. Yeah, because you have assigned over here. Right? Yes. Yes, assign and doing the print that time. Yeah, you have assigned some initial values to after declaration and then printed, displayed it. A print command always uh, I need to write begin after begin only, the begin and end between only. This is your one of the executable statement, right? Any executable statements should be written within begin and end, mm -hmm. not outside or before. Now here, if your requirement is you want to add two numbers, entered numbers, the numbers will be entered during runtime, execution time. So how to, a 
assign a value during runtime. I'm not going to assign any value during initialization. Just in the declare, you took first number, number data, type, second number, and one variable to hold the total, begin and end. Then here you are assigning the value to the variables. V first number, you are assigning the value entered first time to this variable, second number. Here you can use any variable name. But ampersand. When you say ampersand, during one time, whatever number you enter, that physical address will be passed to this variable. Physical address. For that, ampersand is mandatory. Then you are adding the picked value by these two variables and assigning to the total and display the sum of two numbers is total. Run this code. It's asking for the number. So whatever number you pass over here, whatever number you pass over here, the physical address of this number will be substituted for this variable. The display of two numbers is 31. So this is runtime enter entered values for the variables if we don't want the values to be entered at runtime you can substitute the values directly here right forty four this uh, v it looks like a bind variable because of the symbol is same. Hmm? There, there's no, I do not use any bind variable here. All these all are the PL SQL variables because they are written inside the declare, inside your block. Okay. This is your complete PL SQL block. Hmm. Right? If I minimize it, got minimized. I will come to that the block. If I write after end anywhere something, anything, or before declare anything, that's a, that becomes a bind value if you declare. Right. Okay. Now here you have one requirement. Write the program to display employee number, name, Salary, commission, net salary. Five columns. Four columns of the entered employee number. You will enter employee number and fetch this data. So if you want to display this columns data, so the query needed is select query. Correct? Correct. Select an employee number, name, salary, commission. These are the direct columns from the table you can pick. But there is no column name known as a net salary. You need to calculate this. Correct. So to calculate net salary, you need salary and commission values where you'll add up and produce a get a net salary. Mm. So if you want to select these values, you need these many variables also. Mm -hmm. in you need to declare them, correct? In the correct. declaration. V name, V sal, V commission, V gross to hold the net salary. Data types. Select name salary commission, move to the declared variables. E name to V sal, E name, salary to V sal, commission to V commission. From EMP, where employee number is entered employee number. Here you are not assigning any number to the variable. Here you are writing, substituting. It's a where condition where you are comparing the entered employee number. Is it found in the EMP table. So don't put here colon equals to, it is an equal to operator. Mm. Then whatever values you have got to the salary and commission, you're just using an NVL function because commission may have the null value. Okay. So you're after calculation, you're assigning to the gross and using a display.
this v grass uh, this one v you are saying v cell now v cell plus nvl v commission yes yep. nvl function in sql is we discussed right that one yeah no right. that, that's fine i understand yeah. but why we are writing plus nvl we cannot write direct commission v cell plus yeah, commission right. Why? Because commission column we will have nulls also, mm -hmm. right? If you are adding some number with a null value, your output will be null. That's the reason mm -hmm. we use it here, correct? Mm -hmm. So, thirty plus null value. Sometimes nulls commission will be nulls and not nulls. Correct. So, whenever you come across null value, you need to replace it with zero and add to the number. So that you okay, can get it. Okay, okay. Okay. For that we use the N. Otherwise, if you don't use the null N here also, it will execute. But for null values, it will give you null output, even though there is a value. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And here we try to display the result. Now employee number you can decide now. 7788 from the table. Here you see spot, salary, commission. There is no commission for the spot I guess. So it is a blank here and then gross. So here there is no commission means if I don't use NVL, it will give me null. Null plus 3000 here also will be null. So to avoid that, we have used in commission, VNVN. Okay. This is about the, just how to create the blocks, how to declare the variables and write a select query and display it. Tomorrow, taking this query forward, we will see there are some attributes you can assign to these variables that we will see tomorrow's session. Okay, there are two types of attributes like row level and column level, column type and row type. How you can use these two types of attributes for the variables and what is the use of it. You can just go through the today's session, understand it. If any queries are there, you can discuss tomorrow. Fine. Okay. Fine. Okay. Thank you. Okay, then see you tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. I'll send you the file, you just go through it. Fine.